And this screencast is going to cover 9-2, Chapter 9, Section 2, Why Do We Even Care About Preventing Species Extinction? And so we're going to talk about some definitions for the ways that people feel about protecting species. Why are they useful? Why are they beneficial? Why should we keep them around at all? There are two readings that go along with these notes. One reading is from your book about the passenger pigeon. You can read that at the beginning of chapter 9 and answer those questions. You'll have your textbook in class tomorrow. Or you can, um, or I'm sorry, in addition to that you'll also have the rivet poppers. It's a short three-page PDF that's going to be posted on eClass by Paul Ehrlich, the guy who wrote The Population Bomb. It's an easy read. It's a metaphor for what we're doing to the planet by losing species. It's an easy uh, jump to make with his symbolism, but it's still a good read. Here's a picture of orangutans. They are, of course, very much endangered and partially due, due to uh, habitat loss, partially due to hunting and overexploitation. So why should we care about biodiversity? And hopefully by now you do. A lot of times in class we focus on what's called the instrumental value. People want to know that the species they're protecting has some usefulness to us. That's what the instrumental value is really telling us. Something is useful because it has economic value or because it gives us an ecological value. It's very easy to use the economic argument to say something like, uh, we have to keep trees because trees give us paper and paper is something that we can sell. So forests are valuable. It's a little bit harder to use that ecological services. We've talked a lot about it though with the honeybees. Uh, keeping honeybees around is very important because without it we don't have pollination and that's something that we desperately need so that we can have crops. Uh, these can be use or non-use values. Most of the time instrumental values are use values. Again, a tree makes paper. But it could also be a non-use value. Somebody who enjoys going to see birds in the wilderness, somebody who's a bird watcher, has an instrumental value for the bird. They want to go and see it. It is not using the bird, but they still feel it is useful to them. A little bit more on how that's an overlap with another value in a minute. Ecological value is when a species supports and sustains the Earth's life and, econom er, and economies through energy flow, ecosystem functions, nutrient cycling. Again, it goes a lot there with those ecological services that we just talked about with instrumental. So these are overlapping categories. Examples, trees give us oxygen, they do carbon cycling, bats kill disease spreading mosquitoes, oysters filter out water. So these are organisms that are ecologically important, not just for us, that would be instrumental only, but because they help support other ecosystems as well, and that makes it more of an ecological service, an ecological value. Use values, again, tend to be things that we can get a benefit. We as humans get a benefit from. Economic benefits, uh, again, potentially things like ecotourism, going to watch birds, food, I talked about paper and lumber, drugs and genetic information. So there are people that will make the argument that species are most important to preserve because they are useful to us. They have what's called an instrumental value. Use value, very much an instrumental value. Here are some examples, this is from your textbook, of different uh, plant species that are used in different medicines. You can see a lot of them are there. Uh, you've got two cancer treating drugs, the Pacific U and the Rosy Periwinkle. These are in areas that are currently deforested and we do have a shortage of these drugs because we have a shortage of the plants. But you've got other plants there you can look at too. Now some people believe, I'm included in this, that there's not just a use value for species, but we should also value them for non-use value. There's no capital that's acquired, there's nothing that humans are necessarily going to gain, but we think that they should be here. One of the major reasons that we see is something called intrinsic or ex existence value. You just like knowing that the organism exists even though you will never see it or never use it in your lifetime. For me, my example to use for this one is the emperor penguin. The emperor penguin is the largest of the penguin species. It stands about four feet tall. Um, I have never seen one in my life. I have seen them on a movie, but that's not quite the same to me. But I am satisfied knowing that somewhere in this world there is a 
four foot tall penguin. I just think that that's pretty cool and I don't think that anybody should ever take that life from a penguin because they want to explore Antarctica, for example. So an intrinsic value, you really believe that species have the right to exist just because it is innate to them, you should not take it away. Another non-use value is aesthetic, appreciating nature for its beauty. Beauty. And again, this could be somebody like the bird watcher. We tend to put bird watching into use value because they do spend money for it. But if you go out in your backyard and you see birds and you like seeing birds or you like seeing butterflies in your backyard, it doesn't matter to you that they're pollinating. It doesn't matter to you that they're doing anything ecologically of value. You simply wanted to plant flowers to see butterflies. That is an aesthetic value. You value nature for its beauty. You value the trees and the redwood forest because of their majesty. Not because we can cut them down, not because they filter carbon. You appreciate them because they are unique and they're grand and that's the end. Bequest value is another non-use value. And a lot of people, again, you don't have to be one thing or another. Bequest value is very common in many religions. Um, and it's the idea that, that people will protect natural capital so that it can be used for future generations. This also goes a little bit towards what we'll call stewardship here in a minute. Um, but bequest, uh, there's a famous uh, Native American saying, that I'm going to butcher here in a minute, but it, it's basically saying we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from the children. And that's the idea of bequest, is that we need to take care of nature so that we can then pass it on to our children and future generations. Another picture of a endangered species, this is the scarlet macaw, um, and it is endangered in its native habitat. Are we ethically obligated to prevent premature extinction? That's a big question. And Edward Wilson, we, always, we saw a quote from him earlier in this lecture, has coined the term biophilia, the love of life. And what this is, is that given the choice, most people prefer to live where they can see nature. Most people, again, this isn't everybody, but most people like to have um, a connection with nature. They want to see mountains. They want to see the beach. They don't want to see cityscapes. Now, this picture is interesting because obviously it is very much a natural setting with man-made overtones. But people like this. This is what looks like a, a wonderful backyard. Even the hardscapes are made of rock so that you feel that you are one with nature even though this is a constructed environment. But there are other things at play besides just the love of life. Wally, super cute here with his little cockroach friend. But there's something else called biophobia. Biophobia would be the fear of life. We have fears about the natural world, alligators, cockroaches, bats, sharks, bacteria, snakes, rats. You can think of something that you find unpleasant and uncomfortable. And there are some people that feel that way about even things like birds. They don't want them around. They scare them. They don't want to have any part of it. And so are we ethically obligated to protect these things? If we protect the sharks, should we also protect the snakes and the lizards and the roaches? Uh, bats are one of those species that is under attack because people don't tend to like them. Uh, they are vulnerable to extinction because they are slow to reproduce and humans have destroyed much of their habitat. But they're very important ecologically. They feed on insects that would damage crops. They eat, um, they eat from fruit and so they're going to also be uh, transferring pollen. But people have an unwarranted fear of bats, thinking that they are going to be disease-ridden and thinking that they do more harm than good. And in reality, most bats are doing way more good than harm. But one-fourth of all bat species are endangered. Here's a picture. doesn't look like such a cute bat, but voila. Isn't that baby bat just the cutest thing? Okay, moving on. So what you guys are going to do is create a t-shirt and there's a t-shirt template listed on eClass and that t-shirt is going to show a image and hopefully you'll also have a slogan that explains why we should protect biodiversity. So you've got two here. You've obviously got one person uh, who has chosen the to protect the forest for its 
intrinsic, uh, sorry, not it's intrinsic, for its instrumental value, you're using it for medicine, so it's an instrumental use value. And the person on the right has chosen, again, something that is instrumental, you're using it for money, uh, protecting biodiversity so that we could, I think in this case she's going to say that so that we can eat it, so she's drawn a cash cow. But the idea with the front of your shirt is to present some cute idea, some really basic drawing of why it's important to protect biodiversity. You can use a quote, I always love a good quote, one generation plants the trees, another gets the shade. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit in. Uh, don't use these quotes, be creative, but there's some great stuff out there of what you can do. So this is the front, again some more pictures of the front. Somebody has made their own logo, somebody else has used a computer graphic image and you're going to have this digitally so you can absolutely do this. You can pull in pictures if you don't feel like you want to draw it yourself. You can do it either way. Some more quotes. More examples. But on the back, here's the big important part, and make sure you read the instructions that are at the end of this notes. You have to have a paragraph to explain what value you are showing on the front. I'm going to point out to you right here, it says, I chose bequest value. This one says, I chose aesthetic value. This one here has a religious value. It's one that I didn't talk about during the lecture, but it's called stewardship. It goes along with bequest, but stewardship is that idea in the Bible, and it's in other works of religion as well, not just Christianity. Um, but the idea of stewardship is that we are protectors of the earth because our God has made us that way. So a stewardship value does say that we should protect the earth almost because it's got an intrinsic value, but there's a, a bigger moral thing at play, which is we are destined to do that because of a calling in our religion, because God has deemed it so. And that would be stewardship. You are allowed to do stewardship as well. So if you're taking a more religious tone, it is stewardship that would be your value. But stewardship is not an instrumental or a use value. We don't get money from it. We don't protect the trees for God for money. We protect the trees because that's what we believe is the right and moral thing to do because our religion decrees it. That is stewardship. So that one wasn't in there in the notes. I'm going to stop there. The rest of these notes I want you guys to get from the PowerPoint. I'm not going to screencast it, but you'll be able to click through and get those notes on your own. So things that you need to finish up, your t-shirt, which is going to be due next week, the t-shirt itself is really simple. You do notice they are all cut out along the t-shirt and then you write on the back. So make sure you follow the instructions. I don't want you to turn in the entire page. I just want the t-shirt cut out and everything should be on it. I'm going to post these in the back of the room. I don't want them to look like pieces of paper. I want them to look like t-shirts. You will be able to also, this is a grade, just easy, nice homework grade. But you will also be able to do a quiz grade replacement for making an actual t-shirt that looks nice that you will wear to class. And that's the date that I think I'm going to make be the 19th. Okay, so on November 19th, you wear the shirt to school and it looks nice, not trashy, not with a marker. You made a nice t-shirt. You're going to get a replacement quiz grade. Your paper t-shirt is still due. Your paper t-shirt has to follow these instructions exactly. Your t-shirt that you wear, if you want to just have the design on the front, you don't need the explanation on the back because that will be turned in separately. So that is your t-shirt instructions and your notes. Happy taking the rest of your 9.4 9 notes for you there. All right.